Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I'm a fourth generation witch. I want to look at some traditions, rites and rituals in order to celebrate the central point of the year when the sun is at its zenith that we call Midsummer and the pagans call Litha. Litha, of course, is a pagan word for light. In the Anglo-Saxon times, it was referring to the months of June and July. I still call it midsummer because midsummer is what I grew up with. I'm also going to show you how to make a quick flower crown and the traditions and rites behind this because there is a lot of uh, superstitions and folklore associated with it. So with that, here is my video about midsummer. Midsummer sun, of course, is now above the Tropic of Cancer, and this happens at precisely 21.51 p.m. London time in the Northern Hemisphere. This is when the sun is at its peak, and now it will turn its face towards the dark half of the year. Midsummer is also traditionally time when scythe was put to grass, because you shouldn't make hay until the midsummer sun has shone upon your grass. This imbues it with all the healing, helpful nutrition that you need to get you and your farm animals through those winter months. Likewise, it is also the time for witches to cut their herbs. Because the midsummer sun has the peak strength at this time, then the herbs themselves are imbued with that sun energy. In fact, many of the, our old ancestors used to insist that you should only pick your herbs when the solstice sun has risen up and shone above them and the dew is still on them, because this dew is magical. It has great benefits, not just to yourself, but to the herbs. They are at their highest highest potency and healing capabilities. So it's really important to pick them now. And should you pick them, you need to pick the traditional herbs of midsummer. I'm going to put the list up on the screen now for you to look at. These are some that were sacred to the Druids, and they did take quite a lot of their folklore and traditions from our pagan ancestors. There are others that should be included in this list, from my opinion, such as mugwort, plantain, yarrow and marigold. Achillea or yarrow is the witch's herb. That's what I grew up knowing it as because it has a benefit to almost every single aspect of witchcraft. It's a panacea of a herb. It is, of course, a time for the fae. Now, I love the fae. I find them incredibly charming. They can be a bit mischievous. They do tend to take your car keys and hide them. It is one of the reasons our ancestors hung their groups of herbs from the rafters, is to keep the fae away, just in case they did feel like abducting you or your kin. You never know. The Fae don't like to be disturbed, and as midsummer is their great time of revelry, that if you stumble across the Fae during their midsummer activities, you are liable to be cursed. Now, in my opinion, and this has happened to me, that cursed is a too strong a word, you can become fairy struck. And I've been fairy struck before, and it was highly amusing, I have to say, even now. Fairy struck means that you become completely and utterly single minded on doing a task. Whatever that task is, it's a complete nonsense task normally. So I was single mindedly, completely and utterly convinced that there was a key that I needed and I needed to dig it up from this particular stretch by the side of a road. And it was because I'd been communing with the fairies at the time and one of them decided to pay a prank, I suppose, on me. I then spent all day digging up this key until I was absolutely shattered trying to find this key. Of course, it wasn't there. I was covered in mud. My neighbours were like, what are you doing? Don't be so mad. And it was only when I sort of came to that I was like, uh, um, uh, what, what, what was earth was I doing then? So fairy struck does happen, but it is more common than you think. This is also an uncanny time of year. The spirits are said to walk at midsummer, so you could, you know, commune with them if you so chose to. However, there are dangers abroad, and this is one of the reasons that we would light the midsummer bonfire or the Baal fire. 
the bonfire is of course to purify and cleanse and smudge the country with its smoke. The Baal Far has many different traditions depending on whereabouts you are. I mean Ireland they would light them from every hill like beacons across the land. In the West Country they were more seen as communal activities so the community would gather around the bonfire, they'd jump and dance and sing and everyone would take home a burning brand from that bonfire and to light the fire in their heart, which I think is charming. In this part of the world, in the West Country, there was also the chance that if a young maiden and a young lad, they didn't necessarily have to like each other, but if they held hands and jumped through the ashes and the smoke of the bonfire, they would get great luck throughout the year. Lots of people jump through the fires. The bonfire will, of course, chase away the evil from your land. And that is incredibly important, especially now. As someone who deals with evils on a daily basis, I can absolutely assure you the bonfires are particularly good for chasing away the devil. It is, as I said, an uncanny time of year. And should you be at any stone circle around the countryside at midnight on midsummer, the stones are said to walk. Now, where they're walking to is normally the local stream so they can have a drink. I'm not sure where this tradition comes from, but there are apocryphal stories from people who said, oh, well, you know, at midsummer we happened to be camping and we camped by a stone circle. And when they all woke up, they were moved. So there seems to be some sort of something's going on. And when I find out, I'll let you know. It has long been known that Midsummer is St John's Day in the Christian faith and this is a wonderful way of incorporating traditional cultural beliefs into Christianity so that you know when you wanted to spread your religion through a land you could offer the same festivals and fun to the people as they already had. Now St John's Day is always of course supported by the beautiful St John's Wort. This is the flower of summer and it regularly flowers over midsummer. There are many different species of it, but you can generally tell it by if you hold a leaf up to the light, you will see perforations in the leaf. It was said that the devil used to pick the leaves with a needle in order to cancel out the healing and general magical properties of St John's Ward. It was known as Chase Devil because that's what it was used for and it was thrown on the bonfires of midsummer to keep the devil away. And if you hang it from your rafters it's known to keep away ghosts, thunderbolts as well as the devil. In medieval times, it was used to drive out the inner devil during exorcisms. It was used to cure madness and as an antidepressant. And it is still used as an antidepressant today, especially for ladies of certain age. It is a hormone balancing antidepressive herb. Uh, one of the, my favourite traditions is that if you are suffering from infertility, if you go out, and it, I always recommend it should be men and women doing this, and naked, collect St John's wort in the dew of midsummer morn, drink it as a tisan or a tea, then you will have a baby within the year. And likewise, if you're single, if you collect a sprig of St John's wort with dew upon it, you will be settled also within the year. So it brings babies and partners in equal measure. If you come across it accidentally on your travels on midsummer, then do pick some and keep it because it will guard against death. On that day only, I believe. But, you know, that's quite good. If you have a babe born on midsummer, do decorate their cot or crib with a couple of sprigs of St John's wort. This will bring them luck and blessings. And finally, for St John's Wort, don't step on it accidentally because otherwise you will be whisked away by the fey horse who will take you on a wild ride until you're utterly exhausted and then leave you in a ditch somewhere far, far away. So having told you about St John's Wort, of course we're going to use it in making our crown. But first, we have to pick our flowers, so let's go and have a quick look at what there is around. This is Elder, and I'm going to ask the permission from the Elder Mother who lives within the tree before I pick it. As a general rule of thumb, it is safe to assume that flowers that come out around midsummer are 
have affiliations with the sun and so therefore will be perfect for any midsummer wreath that you wish to make. So I have collected a selection of plants and I'm going to use a wire coat hanger which I have bent into a circle shape that fits my head. Cut your flower selection into equal sizes of sprigs ready to place upon the wire. Now take each individual sprig and attach them using either sellotape or, as I've got here, florist's crepe tape. Sellotape actually works just as well, but it's easier with florist tape. And you can just continue attaching the flowers in a line as you go. It is as simple as that. Traditionally, you should use nine different flowers to make your wreath. This is a very magical number, after all. You would wear it during the midsummer dances, and then once the dances had finished and the fire was dying down, you would throw the crowns into the remnants of the bonfire in offering to your gods. Once you've finished, you can join the two wires together. And I like to attach some ribbons, although I haven't got any here at the moment. Et voila, you have a beautiful midsummer wreath. How could you not find this utterly glorious? It is beautiful. I'm going to use the flowers from my crown and make an offering to the water spirits in my garden because it's not quite midsummer yet here and so I haven't got my midsummer bonfire going. If you can't do a bonfire yourself, you can always light a candle and have everyone else light their candles from the main one in a ritual ceremony to celebrate the sun. Let me know in the comments below how you are going to celebrate midsummer. I would recommend a lot of food, a lot of drink, a lot of bonfires and a lot of flowers. I mean, that's pretty much my favourite party. Oh, we've got to invite people. Yeah, I'm not great with people. Maybe just me. <laughs> Anyway, please don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps my channel and me and I would be so grateful. And otherwise, if you want to learn more about this, do go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherall and you'll find witchcraft to suit every budget. And I really hope to see you in my next video.